Hello, everybody. This is Justin Case of American Newscape. Joining our friends and fig personalities, David and Priscilla, the fig hunters, back for another installment of American Newscape. Hello, you two. Welcome back to American Newscape. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. We've we've missed you. We don't know what you've been up to. So, David and Priscilla, with that being said, what's happening? In uh, it's been an exhausting year. <laughs> <laughs> we got way too much uh, water this year. We started uh, collecting all the downed trees and building an ark to keep our figs out of the mud. A fig ark. <laughs> a fig ark. Yeah, you got to save. I mean, we're, we've, so far we've saved so many genetics, and then this this down, you know, this flood. I mean, of water it has been jeopardizing that whole collection. So this is a serious thing. Uh, you got to keep them out of the water so they don't drown. Well, Especially for, the little pigs. They don't have branches yet to swim. Okay. Well, <laughs> for, for for everybody out there, David and Priscilla live in uh, the Armageddon uh, rain flow of Northern California when everybody's been seeing this 20 inches of rain. And uh, it, it's been an ordeal up there. Oh, yeah. Well, it, and it's kind of ironic because we... Um, over like late fall and beginning of winter, we had been listening to an audiobook that talks about California and its history with drought and flood and then drought and then flood. And that's kind of where we're at is we had had so much dry weather for the last like three years. And then all of a sudden we've had three years worth of rain in four months. So it's, uh, it's been interesting to say the least. <laughs> Well, and, and everybody, we live in California where we have a reactionary government and they they do everything based on what happened last week in the state of last week. And they're not real big on looking into the past or history. And you should share that book with the legislature. Oh, yeah. It's, a, it's actually a great book. It's um, Mark Arks. The Drunk Land. Land. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, but it's definitely, it, it really applies to our, ourselves too. We have been building because we've been in a drought. So everything that we were working on was with that in mind. Um, dry winters, 75, 80 degrees in the middle of January. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, this massive um, amount of water, we weren't prepared so and even snow we've had snow, snow twice here this in the last month and a half yeah it's been a crazy winter this year and that's that's quite unusual for us ever i mean sprinkling and sticking for a few minutes maybe five times in the last 15 years but this actually was um, upwards of two feet of snow wow. that priscilla was thinking about bringing out her snowboard yeah and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we we're in the desert. We're in the desert southwest down here, and uh, uh, and I grew up in the desert southwest. So, in the last fifty years, I have never seen a cooler April. It's, yeah, it, it, it's literally brisk down here, and this is when we're well into the nineties and approaching the hundreds. So, this is unusual weather. Well, and I was I was actually showing David pictures of this time last year around the place and everything was out of dormancy and had full leaves setting. And this year we're just maybe a few things are just barely breaking dormancy. The buds are barely starting to leaf out. So it's been, yeah, it's it's been a different experience for sure. I, I don't know. The Mother Nature has got plans for us, I think. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you two, everybody came here to talk, the, not to listen to me, but to listen to you talk about figs. So. Well, it all. Oh, sorry, Justin. It, it all boils back with the figs because after this drought and now this, um, you know, a huge amount of water, we're really looking forward to going back to our familiar. Uh, locations and seeing what has popped up 
um, wild figs this summer. I think it's going to be just a bumper crop of um, new finds this year. Yeah. So th well, there is the positive. Well, we'll talk about fig hunting, David. I mean, there's a lot of us that don't understand that this is a passion you have. It's kind of a hobby that turned into a business and a lifestyle. You are a fig hunter lifestylist. Well, I, it's funny. I, I always, I've always complained that once he gets his mind on a certain track, he can find like anything. Like it used to be old Dodge town wagons and he would see it off the side of I-5 in a field, you know, a half a mile away where nobody else would even notice it as you're driving 70. Um, and he's the same way with figs. He just has like this sixth sense about where to find them. And I think he's kind of honed that skill over the last several years. And the figgy sense, <laughs> is it a sixth sense? <laughs> um, you know, it's all about shapes. Um, the leaves have a very distinct shape. The, the fig trees, when not pruned in the wild, they have a very distinct shape when they have the leaves on top of them. And um, so, and then of course in the wintertime, the, to be honest, they're just as easy to find because the branches, that same uh, pattern is there. And you just have to look i mean it's i wish there was a, a an easier or a longer description to make it harder but it's just noticing patterns and well you know the well uh, oh, go, ahead, go ahead priscilla um along that same line of patterns is like so he I, i've noticed he will find one and if it's a female he'll start looking around for the male and then once he finds that male, he will follow that pattern to and spread outward and find, you know, a ton more other trees in the area. And start using uh, Onyx Hunt is um, a, a go-to app that we've been using for quite a few years now. Um, it allows us to take photos of the current location. So in some places I can go back five years ago and look at the progression of this tree um, to notice any information, relevant information. Uh, at the same time, you can just put your dot down. As Priscilla was saying, start circling around. The male figs really are the most exciting thing to find, which might be, um, or the capper figs. You might think a female would be really exciting because of the fruit, but the male holds the potential. Without that and the fig wasp, there is no finding of wild um, figs. So once you find that uh, male, put a dot down, and it's almost like if you take a string, <laughs> you know, and you start circling about around the radius to see what else you find, and pretty soon you're starting putting other locations to help draw a, uh, a better picture. Mm -hmm. We had a, uh, a friend come visit us last week from Placerville, and he brought a couple um, pots of wild finds that he has discovered himself. One's underneath the bridge. So a lot of us might have seen the, the fig in the cave in um, Italy growing upside down. Well, here is a, a bridge fig doing the same thing, and it's well, pretty cool. And it's like over, there's like a road this way. Mm -hmm. It's an overpass bridge. And it's growing on the underside of the overpass bridge. Yes, so exactly. that like you can view it from the roadway as you're driving underneath. So it's definitely kind of cool. So at this point in time, it's just what's one more fig? <laughs> we have so many. <laughs> well, no, no. They're, you know what I always found fascinating about figs is they, they, they look like a prehistoric plant to me a plant that was designed to survive yeah most definitely um we've found them in some of the like craziest places that you would not think that anything like that would be able to survive and produce something edible out of it well, hope growing out of bedrock you know blackie growing out of the concrete, concrete. A hole in concrete. What? Um, Eight hundred one Red Bluff Roundup grows right. out of between slabs and concrete. A small little spot. Beautiful. 
where some cattle decided while they were waiting for auction to. Speaking of 801, that's, uh, I think we shared last year that we were in the Smithsonian Magazine. And um, we found out some pretty cool news a couple, uh, about, a, about, a week, about a week ago. About a week ago. We got an email and. Um, the article from the Smithsonian um, that featured us and our family and the fake hunting adventures actually ended up winning an ASME award for best photography which is pretty spectacular if you consider the ASME are like all of the national magazines out of all of the hundreds of magazines that you know are published in the US like that article one for best photography and it's cool because most of it is my kids well great great subject matter makes great photographs <laughs> You know, wild, wild country kids out here having, they should be called kids having a childhood outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's so many kids, kids never have that opportunity. Now it oh, is, yeah. it is a family affair, isn't it, David? It definitely is. Um, I put them to work every chance I get. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they enjoy it. Other times it's, you know. We actually just recently did um, our two older girls classes got to plant some fig cuttings with us and actually the oldest one her entire grade got to and then tomorrow we are going to preschool to hang out with 24 three and four year olds and plant with them so <laughs> and then uh, we've had some other teachers reach out to us about um sponsoring fig cuttings and doing a lesson because it's a lot more i mean well you know here, here it is a stick like this in 18 months this is going to be a tree that's going to be producing fruit what else can do that that can grow you know eight feet tall and um, under a year like i said it's um and by 18 months have fresh figs it's just so remarkable it still blows my mind i mean there uh is much need for fast growing trees that produce an edible crop for both animals and humans and a lot of our food deserts think of every city park planted a fig you know it would be mm -hmm. instead of um decorative trees we've actually had in the last year we've had um so not only the smithsonian but we had a german uh film company come out and do like a documentary fake hunting with us that was, pretty cool. that was a crazy adventure um and then we've had just a lot of collaboration with um other not necessarily fig growers but just food growers who, you know, it's been a positive interaction with um, in learning from them and them learning from us and being able to like spread and share that knowledge. Um, <clears throat> and like David said, we've had, you know, more and more teachers reaching out to us to come and do lessons with their classes. And so overall, it's just been, like I said, it's been an exhausting year. I, it's been a fun ride but it's yeah you, you know so like, I've always, you know i've always i've always felt that uh you know tours of what you guys do would be very very popular but you know the more i think about it figs grow throughout north america different varieties right. in different parts of the the uh, uh continent and David needs to write a book on fig hunting. <laughs> well, the how to's, the do's, the don't. Fig hunting, the way we do it, is um, very specialized to California. And that is simply because California imported the fig wasp in the early 1900s. So it makes it possible for us to find new varieties. But 
fig hunting throughout the rest of the U.S. is going to be a little different because you'll be finding self-pollinating varieties, but they will be, you know, lost varieties that somebody's great-great-grandparents, when they immigrated, you know, planted a little stick that they smuggled in. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it's been lost for so many generations. And so it's rediscovering some of these other varieties from, you know, Europe and, and the Middle East and, you know, Russia and China and all those places where people have come from that they've brought their kind of history with them. Well, the, the, the the varieties of figs are still being uh, counted. I mean, there's fig databases. There's there's a fig community that is so embraces its members that they all reach out to help. It's amazing. I mean, that's what got me involved in figs. That w that's what has made me uh, not even an intermediate, but a very very adolescent fig grower. But the passion of that co those communities is unbelievable to me. And David, you two are bigwigs in that community. I don't know about that. We're just regular people. <laughs> yeah, that's the new yeah. no, so we've been doing these fig, fig fun meter buttons. I think the new one's going to be fig hunters. We're just regular people. <laughs> we're just regular <laughs> people. We just put our pants on one leg at a time. Yeah, we're just regular people. Regular. You know, it's education, um, having, answering and growing. Because who doesn't want to grow again from a cutting? Um, what if this was your your grandfather brought this to America, and this is your family tree right here? You want a piece, so you're going to want to join a group. We actually um, started. We have two groups now: Fig Hunters and Friends, which was basically um, started to talk about fig hunting. But just last year, we really saw the need for the education. And this is, I mean, mainly for North America, but it's called growing figs in containers because who doesn't at least at some form start their fig in a container, whether it's a cup, a tree pot, propagating, and a fig tree in a container needs special care versus... Versus in ground, yeah. In ground in some cases. And it's going to be different based on your growing zone and, you know, where you're keeping it. And I mean, there's so many factors that go into container gardening in general, but with Which figs specifically. opens up doors too, right? I mean. Oh, yeah. You could grow a fig in Alaska. Absolutely. Where you couldn't typically, in a container, where typically... In ground, it would not be possible because of the winter. And this is um, heavily prevalent on the East Coast. I mean, they, they, they do the bringing the figs out. Every, fig shuffle. The fig shuffle, that's what they call it. <laughs> Hashtag the fig shuffle. In the winter, they, in the, the fall, they bring the figs in to their, their garages and their carports or um, their storage uh, sheds. And in the springtime, they shuffle the figs back out. I think that's devotion. Well, and then if they get a frost warning, they shuffle them back in. They can, yeah. No, this is so growing figs in containers just made sense. And it's like I said, it's all about education. I mean, we have a, a, a major rule there's no sales in the group. So it's, um, but we do offer free giveaways. <laughs> there's no sale. We can give away free stuff. So that's, um, well, yeah, it's just promoting the continue sharing and, and education what not well, it, well it's building the community you know you talk about back east i've actually seen where uh fig growers build hot houses around in-ground figs to, to winter <clears throat> you know big huge straw covered with tarps with heaters inside to keep their figs oh, yeah. alive and uh that's unbelievable i mean that that will surpass an orchid grower well, that's actually, some, well, I mean, not the straw and everything, but um, all of our starts that we start um, later in the season that, you know, they're not quite big enough to last outdoors on their own <laughs> through the winter. 
we actually we do that we have a little hot house and we have them in totes and we put them in there and um and they make it just fine there's no added heat or anything it's just the ambient temperature from the sun hitting it during the day and but it's just enough that they're in their little containers and they they make it through they're pretty durable plants uh, we actually just did um we were at the farmer's market here locally on Saturday. They were doing a seed exchange uh, for people, just giving away free seeds. And they invited us down to talk about figs. And so we actually gave away a bunch of fig cuttings and um, David did a grafting demonstration and got some kids involved about, he likes to explain it. It's like Star Wars and cloning, um, <laughs> just to kind of get you know like the the interest from from younger generations um, involved and and teaching them to, like just how hardy this tree can be once you get it growing. So we're sitting at the park, and there's I can just say there's one little boy, and we're handing out cuttings. I'm, you know talking about how you can grow this tree in 18 months and he looks at me and he must have been about six he looks at me and he looks at the tree that's sitting behind me at the park and he looks at me and you can you know you just see him kind of like without saying he, just disbelief of this could be a tree <laughs> and i think i made a post someplace that that i just had a feeling that little boy is going to go home and pick up any stick he can and try planting it <laughs> to see if he can grow a tree. Because he, he really, I mean, like I said, he's sitting there talking to his dad, talking to him, and he's just like, look, and look at that to a tree. And you can just see these wheels turning. And that's so cool because that's our next generation of scientists. I mean, wouldn't that be cool if one day they said, hey, you know, well, that's what encouraged us. And it's the value of like, I know we do it for our kids so that they know where their food comes from. They have from, you know, babies of six months old, they have been a part of everything that we do here. You know, they've seen the raising of livestock and, you know, what happens and why we, you know, raise them and that that's our meat in our freezer. And they've, you know, they've helped with the birds and collecting eggs and... They've helped plant the garden and they help and get to see. I just think it's a, it's a lost value that is worth educating the newer generation of growers um, so that they understand, like, this is where your food comes from. Somebody's hands help make this possible. Well, and I, w I would encourage people to think they've had figs um, and didn't enjoy them, that they may not have been eating the right figs. That's true, too. That's one of the biggest things I tell most people is that if you have ever just had figs from a store, um, you know, store-bought grocery figs, you have never truly had a right fig. It's, it's not the same thing. They can't ship ripe figs, um, but we can. <laughs> 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 well let, let's talk about that <laughs> let's talk about that the fig hunter shop you guys actually have a store can you can you tell us what's in that store um a lot yeah um a lot of our we we list some of our best finds so that you can uh, buy cuttings to propagate and we actually actually have a few of them have uh, rooted scions available already. If you uh, are not comfortable with the idea of rooting them yourself or you just don't want to wait that long, <laughs> um, they're available. And then we do have fig food products. And one of the things that we are going to be offering this year is um, fresh fig tastings. So, uh, Late summer, early fall, we started sending out these tasting packages to people to kind of hone in how to 
package and get them shipped safely to make it in good condition. Um, and I think we kind of dialed it in pretty good. And so we are ready this year that we're going to be offering those for sale to the general public as well. And that's pretty yummy. I mean, <laughs> I <to> say that's <laughs> pretty, that's going to be pretty, pretty fun. What else we're going to be doing? Um, what else is new with the shop? I think we have the jerky sticks. So we, we did the sausage, the sausage, figs and pigs with cheese. Amazing. But, and it's all about me. You know, there's ego there with it. The food. <laughs> I can't take those sausages to work and cook them. Um, it's pretty difficult because we aren't allowed, they don't cook well in microwaves. <laughs> right. uh, so we developed a, a product with our, um, the local butcher and it's fig jerky sticks. So pork and fig with other spices and that could, um, it's been a pretty good seller. Well, yeah. And they're shelf stable, like as long as they're, um, still sealed you can like pack them around for a few days if you know you don't get to them right away they're you can keep them in your car as like a quick snack if you need to or whatever um and they're delicious they're think slim jim but healthy and taste better um, and then uh we have been playing with um the idea of hand pollination as well so that you know people can kind of experience what we get to experience here in California with pollination and its effects on the flavor of figs. Yeah. So. That was a, that was a, there was a, um, well, Ross, um, he has a, Ross Roddy, he has a fig channel and we sent him out some figs last year for a tasting pack and he's sitting there going, this is just blowing, this is mind blowing. It's like I've never tasted figs before, and it's most likely because, well, our varieties are uh, a little bit better <laughs> taste-wise because uh, of the caprification or the pollinating, and that is something we want to share with um, the rest of the uh, United States. We're working with a, another gentleman um, down in Louisiana. Michael Monti, uh, and we're coming up with some different ways to make hand pollination available. Um, so you don't have to have what's called a capper fig in your collection. And it's not as hard as you can think of. I mean, think it's just really take a couple figs, you mix the pollen in a syringe with a little bit of water, and you inject them. So if you really want to call yourself a fig collector, um, and you want to try the best of the best, it is definitely a easy way to do that. Oh yeah, well, and I think I, most people don't realize just pollination, um, it amplifies all of those good qualities in a fig. And basically you're turning, by, by doing the pollination, you're turning a singular fig into two figs now because mm -hmm. you've got the unpollinated flavor and then the pollinated flavor, which can be totally different. But um, that's one of the advantages that we get to have here in California that we want to share with other people. So nature's just so amazing, you know. It's a, it really is. Well, and and it's been able to give us a means to provide cool stuff for our families. So <laughs> in, in the education, I mean, I can think of. Um, a gentleman that ordered something and we we're kind of chatting and i said hey i appreciate it your order just literally provided a, you, the means to go sponsor this classroom buy the dirt buy the the cups buy the totes the heat mats and um that's kind of cool so we're well i think just, i don't think you'd be uh, opposed to sponsors stepping up to try and help you with some of these expenses would you no it would be nice um i know we have a, a local um we have two local businesses that help with the the dirt sponsor and some of the other products well i um, I, th yeah. I think 
I think that's the next step for some of us. I mean, we can enjoy your store. We can enjoy your your products, uh, your passions. and uh, yeah, But what really sticks in my mind, you're educating the next generations. And uh, what a wonderful gift you're taking to them. And the idea that you might be able to expand that program would give some sponsors some opportunity to be involved. Oh, I would love to. Um to whatever classroom you know it sounds like that is interested in some fig cuttings i mean it would be amazing to share it definitely um well even you know if you think if you think about a package being shipped to a classroom in north carolina you could actually do some facetime with them and walk them through the program oh yeah um and I, w we so in the middle of covid we couldn't go into our girls classrooms uh, we've been doing this with their classes for several, several years now Please. um yeah so in the middle of covid we couldn't go in and participate with them so we actually ended up making a uh, video a youtube video of of several different methods that we have used um and we've given them the supplies and their teacher logs in and they're able to watch it and um and they were able to get it done that way but I, it's definitely i think it's more fun to be interactive oh, sure. um so so maybe zoom we could do a zoom with a classroom and um that way we could you know be live and talking to them that's definitely an idea zoom so uh, such an amazing tool these days um being able to offer as Priscilla said, people have issues with potting or even when it comes down to grafting, being able to offer them, hey, we can do like a 10-minute Zoom call and quickly answer your questions and you can actually see versus telling us through an email, photos, or even over the phone. We can see what problems we can um, you're having or give you a solution. Some people just want to hear, hey, that looks great. You know, you're doing great <laughs> for reassurance. Zoom is definitely a very useful tool. Well, guys, I and, we go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, in this last year, we've definitely seen an uptick in um, interest from new leg growers um, of figs. So definitely well, expanding into. I think that's because you've proven a remarkable resource uh, for all of us, and whether it's information. Uh, technology you know this uh, pollination thing sounds pretty exciting to us we don't have the wasp <laughs> because no respect self-respecting wasp would endure 120 degrees in the summertime <laughs> but uh the figs will and the figs do quite well down here because of they mm -hmm. they love the heat and they love the soil particularly certain varieties but Tell us how people can reach out to you. I know you've got a YouTube channel, uh, Facebook, you have your Facebook groups, website, and we'll provide all those links in the read more. What else would you suggest? Um, we, we have, well, we have a 1-800 number or well. Yeah. So we have an 800 number. You can call. It's toll free. 844-344-4687. Um, it rings to both of us. So... <laughs> Uh, if nobody answers, then it means that we're really busy. We can't get to the phone, uh, but we will call you back. Um, like you said, we have the website, um, thepighunter.shop. And then we are on all social media platforms, uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, as The Fig Hunter. So you just type in The Fig Hunter and you can find us pretty easy. Well, that's pretty cool. This is definitely going to be an amazing year we'll, even in august we're going to have another get together in winters california um for fig tasting and it's just as priscilla said earlier everything's just kind of busy it definitely is busy it's and been with the um that's sorry. a that that's a testament to you guys and uh you know the passion and the hard work you put into it why don't, is there a final thought you want to leave us with? Um, 
we just I think just want to thank everybody who's going on the adventure with this. I think it's pretty awesome that so many people are, you know, invested in our family and what we do and are becoming invested in, you know, growing and doing this awesome thing for their families as well. We totally concur. I mean, I really appreciate that you've been a, a strong supporter of us since the beginning. And we have a couple others that have just been um, cheerleaders for dreams. And one of them is Charles Malky um, of Ivy Organics. He's been just a great supporter. And he does a, a free fig giveaway. This is the sixth year. Mm -hmm. Every the, February. The third year we sponsored. It's some, you know, some like-minded people that um, encourage dreamers. Because that's what, you know, we, I'm a dreamer. <laughs> I dream of saving every fig that I find <laughs> and adding it to a collection. Whether it tastes good or not, it's going to be a tree out there that is just um, one day people can come visit and just be amazed. And we, so I guess uh, finding figs and making friends. How cool is that? That's what we're... Mm -hmm. Well, I, I want to personally thank you guys. And, and we're all, I think most people watching are proud of what you're doing. So everybody. This has been Justin Case, David and Priscilla, and the Fig Hunters. Thanks for joining us. Remember, additional information and links to provide in this video is read more. Today is the day to subscribe to this channel. Please learn more about figs and the Fig Hunters.